welcome to a new Harry's Garage and today's car I'm really excited about because it's the Rolls-Royce Wraith Black Badge. Quite a mouthful but it has that name for a good reason. The Black Badge is the ultimate uh, Rolls-Royce that, that they say is for customers who, who like to get a bit of a move on, who like to get places in a bit of a hurry. And uh, if you were at Goodwood in, uh, I think it was 2016, last year, there was a chap called uh, Justin Law, you might know from XJ220s and he does various other things. He put this car, Lord March has this great thing, this sort of top 10 shootout for the road cars. And Justin Law drove this and he drove this car to fifth position in the ultimate top 10 shootout. Quite an achievement. Um, be because behind that black badge, there is a, the V12 twin turbo that we know from Rafe, but this has got a little bit extra, uh, the wick turned up, more torque. I mean, the horsepower stays the same, but it's 624 horsepower. So I'm really uh, looking forward to this uh, car, but it's a car for long journeys. So in the morning, we're setting off for one of my bucket list events, somewhere I've, I've never been before, but always wanted to go and it's the uh, Concorde Elegance at Villa d'Este, which is on the Lake, uh, Lake Coma, just on the shore, wonderful villa, wonderful venue, packed full of beautiful cars and uh, beautiful people, uh, and me, uh, which is the first time in all these years. I've always wanted to go. That's where we're going. You'll come along too. I'm gonna to take in some Alpine passes, not the usual sort of Stelvia passes, some secret ones I know. Show you some of those. We're gonna enjoy the journey. So the next time you see us, we'll be making our way to the Eura Tunnel. So I'll see you there. Okay, well, we're at Yora Tunnel. Beautiful day outside. They say it's going to be the hottest day in May. Um, recorded, it was 30 degrees, they reckon, outside. Very nice in here. Um, set off early this morning from near Oxford, um, came down. Oh dear, the, the British motorway system really, you know, it's not good. Um, it gets so much better once we're in France. But um, some things we found out about this car. Well, one thing it's very good at is going slowly and um, we're in queues in Oxford and it's got the latest tech on the cruise control so it has the radar and things and uh, this is exceptional if you can you can have it set at like 60 miles an hour and then you come across a queue and it will slow down very gently but what's really impressive is how it comes to a stop. It's like a, there is a chauffeur driving this car and you've got your feet off and uh, you can just come up and it'll just in a queue of traffic and just stop ever so, I mean, almost imperceptibly when you actually come to a halt. Very clever. And then if you, if you just stop for a few moments, it will then set off again. If you pause a bit longer, you have to touch the accelerator and it trundles off again. I also noticed coming down the motor where you're cruising just a touch over the speed of it, 75-ish, and um, I'm using between five and seven percent of available power. Well, it's 624 horsepower, so I, apparently I only need about 40 horsepower to cruise through uh, UK motorway system. Anyway, I'm glad that bit's over. We're now, if you just look out the front, we're just waiting um, to board the, play, um, the train. Uh, I'm going in an ordinary carriage. I think it'll be all right in an ordinary carriage. It's, it's a little long, um, and then, you swing back down um, and then we are we're hit France and we're not going to go your usual way through France. If I had a map I'd probably show you but I haven't. Um, we're going to go cut across to um, Strasbourg. The brain in neutral way to Lake Como is to actually go through France and to go through Mont Blanc Tunnel and across just to use the motorway system. We're not doing that. I'm going to go to Strasbourg pop down an autobahn because I think this car I just want to see what it really if it's using 100% of its available power I want to see it on the autobahn stop off somewhere in Switzerland it's worth paying for the vignette and then we'll do some wonderful roads in Switzerland so I think the next place you'll see us will probably be as we're coming to Strasbourg and going on the autobahn so I'll see you there okay well now it's just gone seven o'clock um, we left Euro Tunnel at Oh, it's about one o'clock so it's it's six hours we've gone through Strasbourg so what more do we know about this Rolls-Royce well um, I've set the cruise as usual through France at about 85 uh, miles an hour so just a little bit over um, 130 clicks but not much and um, very gently drifted across France uh, there's just more gendarmerie activity these days so I don't really push it 
Um, and doing that, I, I, I've noticed that my MPG, when we um, set off this morning, was sitting at about an average of 18 miles a gallon. It's now at 22.4 MPG. I think that's a bit of a result, actually. That's not bad. If you think this is a 6.6-litre .6 V12 twin-turbo and it weighs 2.4 and 2.5 tonnes, um, that just shows you how efficient sort of modern uh, IC engines are getting now. But we're fed up with going slow now. We're going to give it a bit of a test. The autobahn's just up here, and it's well worth coming this route. It's not an autobahn that you're going to get a 200-mile-an-hour type car at its top speed, but it's... I try and time it so it's this time of day, it's just sort of coming up to dusk, it's a bit emptier. Um, and there's short blasts on this bit of autobar, so I would hope this is speed limited 155. Um, I feel it's my duty to check that that speed limiter is in place and it stops at precisely 155. And I want to see how much power is got in reserve at 155, so we'll find out what happens. rev counter so you don't actually know where it is in the gears you've got another trick if you um, want to uh, use more there's a low button on the gear uh, stick that just cuts it out from it's an eight-speed gearbox that removes the use of seven and eight I think so it's just a bit more responsive um, if I delve into there I, I can turn traction controls and things and stability controls off we don't need to do that when we're doing this but this is just sitting at um, about 110 miles an hour and it's very civilised as you'd expect. A little bit of wind noise I think just coming from the mirrors and we're just going through a 120 sign there so I've got to slow it right down. Um, yeah there's very little road noise from the tyres, um, very impressive on that size. Just the refinement, this is a two and a half tonne car and it just has that way of riding down the road that just swallows distances. Very impressive. Okay, we're just approaching Baal. Um, there's a lot of 120 limits on the bottom half of the autobar as you approach Baal, and then the last bit is a bit of freedom. We're just in a bit now, cruising in at uh, 105, 110. Um, we're off to find the hotel now. Um, so next time you join us, we'll be outside the hotel, and I'll give you a little rundown of where we're going tomorrow. There's some very special passes in Switzerland. Okay, it's day two in this trip in this Rolls-Royce Wraith Black Badge. Last time you saw us, we are on the Autobahn, uh, just coming down from Strasbourg for, uh, towards Baal. And then we slipped off, stayed in a hotel, um, it's called Laura, um, in, just in Germany, uh, rather than going into Switzerland last night, because it's a bit cheaper staying in uh, Germany than staying in Switzerland. Got up this morning, I didn't do something outside the hotel, because we needed to get off. And the uh, first thing you do, uh, you enter Switzerland. And I had to buy a Vignette Pass, which is this pass that lets you use the Swiss motorway. And I wanted to do that, I wanted to go into Switzerland, because Switzerland actually has some fabulous passes. If you just zoom in, and I can't quite see where I'm meant to be looking, here we are. So, bar there, we stay in a little place, so Laura, just up here, come down, the motorway behaving your best behavior no speeding at all in Switzerland they get very upset but this this is a little epicenter of passes um, it's a bit like the Evo triangle um, there's a Suston pass there's a Grimsel pass Furka pass and then the Gotthard pass which you might know from Evo days okay so that's where we are and I wanted to bring this um, Rafe here because these roads are just glorious Switzerland is, I mean, it's amazing. It's beautiful weather just at the end of May, and it's like it's like perfect. Everything's like hoovered, and it's like extraordinary country. How clean and wonderful it is, and it has these great passes. Um, you see, on a day like this, 
I thought it would be a bit quieter up here, but there's plenty of bikes and a Porsche Targa just going past. So I think we're going to have a bit of company, but we're going to head towards the Gotthard Pass now. So I think it needs the big open cars for this Wraith to score. There's, um, there's some trick things on it, uh, you put it into low ratio, and I think, yeah, just what is this car going to behave like on some more testing roads? Well, let's go and find out. Okay, well, we're on the Gotthard Pass now. Um, this is a, I think it'd be a good pass for this car to, uh, to try it on because it's a more open pass. It's, it hasn't got the really tight um, hairpins and things. This is a more open, more flowing um, pass. I think this would suit this car quite well. Now, first thing to understand with this car, there are no sport settings or dynamic or anything like that. I really admire Rolls Royce for that, but there are a couple of things you can do. First of all, I'm going to select drive and then low gearbox and if I go to menu and go to um, setup let's have a look and I can go to stability control and remarkably on a car like this I have um, traction and I have DSC off um, which I admire um, Rolls-Royce for doing because um, that that's a bit of a surprise having that on this car so anyway let's see what happens since it locks me in for once there's quite a lot of traffic today but uh, we'll see what we can do now first thing as we just go there is still quite a push from this engine uh, might be at altitude but 646 pound foot of torque at, you know to start with that is a monster amount of torque and yes it's got quite a big car to move about but it's a big engine 6.6 .6 litre twin turbo steering as you expect it's electric steering it's not the last um, last sort of name in feedback or whatever. So here we are, I can feel the roll, it's got this anti-roll as well but um, it's not doing much. Oh my god, yeah that is in low. I do like the sound of that engine though. I don't remember a Rolls Royce ever sounding like that. Yeah, quite a good run at this actually, there's not a lot of traffic, it's pretty sexy. The tyres aren't uber dynamic so, and they're not low profile, to, uh, 285 I think at the rear. It acquits itself quite well. Uh, it's a bit of a hooligan. I do feel a bit of a hooligan doing this. Um, here we go. It's just the power. You just squirt it on the straight. But my goodness, it's a hell of a squirt. Drive position good. And the other surprise is actually the seats grip you quite well. I mean, they just look as though they're made for comfort. But they've got a surprising amount of bolster at the side. I can think of some sports seats that aren't actually as good as this. We're going to make our way to Lake Como now because we're we're meant to be there in a, uh, an hour and a bit, so I can't hang about up here too long. But uh, it just has these monumental horsepower; it just dominates everything. And even though it's the weight it is, it, it dismisses it. Just yeah, it's true Rolls Royce fashion. Oh, if you've got adequate power, you've certainly got adequate power in this car. Yeah, pretty epic all round. Epic car, epic scenery. Anyway, Lake Como, Villa Deste, that's tomorrow, and a secret reveal from Rolls Royce, which I'm looking forward to. Down to the villa now. Okay, we're just coming into Lake Como, and as every time I've been down here, there's a queue of traffic and uh, do you want to just swing around here this is something this car does really well I, I'm not having a touch it's radar in the car in front and it's just how s softly it can stop in these sort of conditions and then just quietly move off again someone's worked very hard at that on some test track for months I'd imagine I know other cars have it but no one I've no car I've experienced is as smooth as this. That is so soft. That is amazing. And then it releases like that. How good's that? You have reached your destination. Your what? destination is on the right. Morning. Um, we have enjoyed Villa Deste, and now, unfortunately, it's time to go home for this wonderful setting at Lake Como side. Just about. To pack the car 
And uh, but I thought I haven't actually given you a guide around this car and just have a look at it in a little bit more detail. First thing to say, it has presence, and it's quite a big car. It's 5.2 meters long. If you think the new Range Rover is just under five meters, it is an exceptionally large car. Um, but that translates to a lot of space inside and this glorious sort of long-legged feel to it. The other thing um, to note on the outside is the perfect paint finish. Um, today, uh, manufacturers are using this water-based paint and uh, we were getting used to sort of orange peel type on finish on the cars. Not on a Rolls-Royce. They hand finish it, uh, hand polish it, hand rub it down with lacquer, layer upon layer, and you get a true mirror finish, which is just extraordinary. Fortunately, this car is now done for about nearly a thousand miles. It's done chauffeur duties while we've been here. So it's a bit dusty, so it's not quite as mirror finish as when it first arrived, but paint is exceptional. Now, the first thing on a Rolls-Royce is they have rear hinge doors. And you, when you first sort of live with this car, you sort of go to the back of the door out of subconsciously because you're so used to opening the door the other way. The advantage of a rear hinge door is it opens really wide and it makes getting in and out very easy, as you can see. That, that's why you, hit, you fit a rear hinge door. It also, in theory, makes it easier to get in the back. Um, the, the, hinge, the seat hinge forward like that and I can... I'm about, uh, I'm six foot two. I don't know if you can see that. I have loads of room back here, uh, which is pretty amazing. So the seat's set for me at six foot two. I'm sitting in here, no problem at all. We traveled back in this car last night and it's, it's nicely rate the seat. This is to travel long distance. If you're gonna sit in the back of this thing, you will not complain. But where you really want to sit is up the front. Now here, Things to notice, lambs wool rugs, which you just can't help but take your shoes off when you're driving because you just want to feel the lambs wool. Um, the dash is laid out, it has this um, carbon finish on the dash and it has a weave of metal. I can't say I really like it. Um, it's sort of trying too hard. Um, the, the sort of feel of this car, I'd rather have that dash finish in black granite, I think. That would suit the car better. Lovely how they've done it. When I, I've got in the car now and you're thinking, oh, there's no central screen. First button I press is here. This sort of wakes the car up. Um, the screen becomes there. There we go. And it does little plays little tunes. It's like a harpist on this car, the sounds you get. And it's all very easy uh, to work out. Radio is just controlled with buttons down here and a volume knob. I love the ventilation um, switches that go from off, soft, medium, high, or max. And how also the temperature uh, is done split and the controls for the temperature are just color. So you have a bit more blue shown or a bit more red if you want to warm up. And I was talking to the um, CEO of uh, Rolls-Royce yesterday and he just says, well, you don't, you don't need to set it at 21 or 22. When you're driving, you just want to be a bit cooler or a bit warmer. And so you nudge it either way. You don't need a temperature to say, oh, I want it at 22. And that's the sort of ethos behind the car. Um, you have the, the sort of familiar shared with BMW control, the central uh, control in the middle the beautiful um, dash layout and the, uh, the metal sort of um, ventilation screens. It all works beautifully well. Uh, you control your lights on here. This wand is actually the gear change and this one's the wipers and indicators this side. Dash, you, the dials I almost don't see. I'll give it um, maximum marks for having a speedo that goes around 150, 160 is the last increment. And when we're doing on the autobahn, you can use the, all that dial up and the needle is actually pointed at the end of the dial. You have this nonsense power available gauge on the left. It's a bit odd living without a rev counter. Um, you sort of don't need to know because it's always files away. But you've got the head up display on this car and uh, you just look at that. You very rarely look at the instruments apart from the um, petrol gauge, which, which come, you, know, you want to know when you want to fill up. I think that's it in here. Beautiful finish, starlight headliner, real hit. Um, just very nicely finished. Actually, something I ought to just say, if you just step back, the door 
it's quite a long reach, so I can't reach it from here. But I have a button which can do this. And I can also have a button here where I control it for the passenger as well. Anyway, let's have a look under the bonnet. And there we are. 6.6 litre V12 twin turbo. Um, remarkable engine, 624 horsepower, 642 pounds of torque. It's very nicely dressed, very quiet, does the job magnificently well. That's all you really need to see. Now, just a quick look at the boot. The boot, which is so enormous, I can do this. Ah. It's enormous. That's the only way you can see the back of it. Oh, you let me out. So you're not going to run out of boot space in this car. It's a proper GT for crossing continents. As we're about to do. So, right, we'll pack up the car and then we'll set off up into the Alps again. We're up in the Alps again, as you can see from outside, and uh, we're on the um, Thurka Pass at the moment, trying to make our way to the Grimsel Pass. Um, it's really narrow this pass, the um, Furka Pass as you come up, uh, really narrow hairpins, you just run for two cars to play, sometimes you have to pull over and then it opens up, you can sort of see the sort of road as, as we get up the top, um, come straighter and it's just spectacular at this time of year because you've still got plenty of snow around, um, looks fantastic, but this is quite a big car to bring up here. Yeah, it's worth it for the scenery rather than the driving. Probably not what he expects to be chased up a mountain pass in as a, as a pretty great Rolls Royce. Now, this is the Grimsel Pass. This is a really special pass, very pretty. Uh, lots of hairpins on it. And oh, they said it was open. What a swing round. Um, yeah we're we're on plan B then well we'll have to go back and do the Furka pass again which isn't too bad uh, and just do the normal motorway slep home so we're now yeah we're back on the motorway this is a really nice if you're down this area Grimsel pass is open do do it um, but yeah we're head back onto the motorway system and on the way to France and on the way home see you later Well, the last time uh, you joined me, we're up in a very different scene. We're up in the Furka Pass, up in Switzerland. Since then, we dashed across France, all about 300 uh, miles till we got to the Jura Tunnel, and then have quickly come round the M25. And I'm just heading out of Oxford on the way home, so the last leg of this journey. Uh, it's bank holiday today, so we wanted to get here as quick as we can. So in all, looking at the dash, we've just about done 2,000 miles in this. Uh, Rolls-Royce Wraith Black Badge. Um, really got to know this car um, and uh, yeah it's I think it's worth going through some of its stronger points and some of its less strong points. First of all steering, yes one well, another car of electric steering, yes it's got sort of lane departure um, assets by being electric and they buzz all the time. I haven't found a way of turning it off if it spots and you know you're going down the side of the road or um, if you're on the motorway and you just change the lanes there's a little buzz comes through the wheel but apart from that it's pretty inert it doesn't really matter for most of its driving but when we we're up on the passes it was a it was a bit of a bore really um, so yeah steering is a bit of a letdown uh, on it then the design of the car really like the sort of confident front the bluff front I like that it's not actually blinging this um, black badge introduces that uh, black grill things and uh, I think it really suits the car with the minimal lights and things and then I love the side profile but it just looks not quite as confident at the rear, a bit pinch. I know they're probably trying to lose some mass by the design but it doesn't quite have that confidence that the front has. Um, then we go on to, well yeah, brakes weren't, um, they just feel adequate the brakes up in the mountains and, they, and this is a really quite a quick car so I'd, I'd like them to be a little bit beefier perhaps. Weight of the car. Uh, again, probably in the mountains, it's, you do feel it's quite a big car and you just think, why does this car weigh 2.4 tonnes? It's aluminium construction, it's two-wheel drive, yes it's got a beefy engine, but you just think, where, where is all that mass? 
Um, and then it's, you know, when you park in it, you certainly notice sort of 5.2 meters of car. Um, so, but the flip side of that weight and moving to the good points, and there's quite a few of those, is that mass give this this indomitable feel, this um, just eat the miles sort of feel, and also a wonderful ride quality. Uh, I remember the, the first Wraith, you know, really impressive ride, um, even though it was, was on run flat, tyres. I, I had a look at these tyres. I can't see run flat mentioned on them at all, so I just wonder if this is on conventional tyres. But a terrific ride quality. Um, impresses from the moment you step into it. It swallows um, bumps and undulations. Beautifully damp. No settings on the damper. It's just right. And some of that is actually the mass that helps its ride quality. But it does give it a glorious feel to go down the road. And then there's the engine. Yeah, 6.6 .6 litre V12 twin turbo. That isn't going to disappoint. 624 horsepower. That isn't really, you know, not a huge amount for that sort of engine. It does it to five and a bit thousand revs. Maximum torque though, 642 uh, pound foot of torque. That's from 1500 on. It's a mighty amount, mighty engine. It delivers so much grunt to this car dismisses 2.4 tons, always feels quick, put it in the low setting and you'll be shocked at what this car can do. Standing starts, overtakes, that sort of thing. The way on the um, autobahn, it just punched straight up to the 158. Okay. I love the way actually the needle swept all the way around the dial to the very last point. It uses it a whole lot of the speedo. Great to see sort of schoolboy stuff, I know, but you know, it's just great to see. So fantastic what that delivers and also pretty efficient I say we've done pretty much any, everything in that 2,000 miles of riding and the average mpg for the whole week and 2,000 miles 21.6 mpg impressive that and that's also with the size of the tank delivers a you know a 400 plus mile range that's really useful in a car like this and then there's the just the depth of quality that paint finish it's extraordinary, second to none. Absolutely mirror finish, uh, the black outside. And the way also they've done those carbon wheels, first car really like this to have a carbon wheel, but beautifully done, polished wheel with the aluminium just on the outside and the hub. Very clever. Um, interior lever, rattle three, um, lever against lever, just, just the way it's trimmed. I love sitting in the back, the fact it was this big four seater. You feel very special in this car and, the, and all the, you know, the chrome bits, the knobs, etc. So all that, what's it all wrap up to? Well, what it actually brings to the party is a massive feel good experience. What I really like about this car is it is, offers a unique experience. From the moment you approach and you open that door, that rear hinge door and step inside, there is nothing else that delivers this drive that I've experienced over the last week or so. You sit behind the um, Spirit of Etsy at the front of the bonnet, that defines it, this long bonnet. You power it up, it purrs into life. It feels beautiful, everything you touch, and you just glide away. And the way this car can drive so slowly and so majestically and use that sort of tech that's on board, that radar, just to keep the distance and uh, cruise control, etc. That is a unique feeling in motoring. But it does come at a cost. This car, as I say, as you see it here, 320,000. That means you could buy two DB 11s for this car or two uh, Bentley Conti GTs. So this is a very expensive car operating in a very rarefied atmosphere of um, rivals if you like in the park. The only car I think it comes close to rivaling is probably the um, the Ferrari and the, the new FF, the GTC4 Lusso. That has a similar sort of feel-good factor, low slung coupe, but it's a different animal. That's always egging you on to go faster. This one just says, well, step inside, I will relax you, you I can take you anywhere in the world, and I can, yeah, if you want to see, um, enjoy stuff in press, I'll squirt up, give off a performance you won't believe, but I'll also do that 
rolling up to the Savoy Hotel and just step out and have that sort of wow factor. So I've really enjoyed the week. It's one of those cars, I know I'm in a good car if I'm going home and I'm gonna have a quick look at the classifier to see how much they are. That's what I feel about this um, black badge. It's an exceptional car. Um, it's a rare thing, you won't see many of them, but I bet the owners are really loving them. In fact, I know one owner has just swapped his F12 um, TDF out for one and he owns a race team and he's charging across Europe and he's never been happier and I can quite understand why. Anyway, so I hope you've enjoyed the video. That's the Rolls-Royce Raver Black Badge. Um, there'll be more videos coming on very soon, but if you want to follow me on Twitter and on Instagram, you'll catch up some of the things I'm up to. See you soon. Bye.